Let's go up hill. Welcome to 5K Friday. Anybody else feel like maybe this is a 5K, like this, you're going after it. Some of you are like, man, my life right now is a marathon. Or maybe you're like, no, I'm, I'm on a sprint. All right. I told you guys, I usually don't really prepare for these things, for these lives. I just let Holy Spirit bring them to me as, as will. <laughs> and wow, did I learn something cool this morning. I can't wait to get to it with you. But first, what do we do? Oh my goodness. You guys, I don't have any tea. <laughs> as you can see, the background's a little different. I told you on Wednesday, if you have not seen Wednesday's episode on Wild Wednesday, you will not be surprised that I forgot my tea. But the three little humans that I have, I am taking care of them. One is napping right now. All are still alive. So far, we're about four hours into this thing and we are doing okay. The other two are with Grandpa and with Hannah. It's all going to be all right, guys. <laughs> I will survive this weekend. But, but okay, RVT time. We've got no tea, but that's okay. Still, t I can't believe I forgot that. Still tell me, again, it could just be one. Just come up with one. One thing that you are thankful for. One thing from the last 24 hours, and it has to be something that you've never said before. Man, do I have a good one for today. I went to diesel engine and heavy equipment repair in Burlington, North Carolina. Was having an issue with the RV. It's okay, but was having an issue with the RV. And I was like, oh my, I have my nieces coming. I have the craziest weekend of my year, literally guys, literally. Two baptism services, speaking on Sunday, two birthday parties, one of which I'm hosting, and I have three little people, nine, seven, and three years old. Not the weekend to have an RV problem. But, but, I took it to these guys. Let me tell you, shout out. You know that I absolutely love to give credit where credit is due. Shout out to them. Wow. I pulled the RV in. I, I called them, said, I've got an issue. Can you at least just look at it? I don't want to do further damage. They said, bring it on in. Mike and Nathan, hearts, thumbs up, more hearts, more thumbs up to you all. I tell you, they came out, it was service with a smile. Those guys looked it over and actually it was two problems. I thought it was one problem that had two issues, but no, it was two totally separate things. These guys came out, they worked on it for me, and then I go in to pay and this beautiful woman named Glenda, I'm telling you, I walk in the door. Have you ever, have you ever done this before where you walk into a place and somebody just lights up the room. I mean, I was already on cloud nine because of these sweet workers. And then I walk in to the billing department and oh, my, oh, you guys, mom just brought me tea. <laughs> and she didn't stick around to be on the show. I don't understand. Anyway, oh man, and she brought me the tea from yesterday. <laughs> The tea my dad made with the super high caffeine in it. Okay, so we got the tea. We're good. We can do our thankful thrives. So I, I walk in to the, this billing department area at this RV place. Oh, diesel engine and heavy equipment repair. I wanted to get her all right. In Burlington, North Carolina, this woman lights up the room. I, I was already on cloud nine from having just great interaction with these men. And then... I walk in there and she is radiating. Oh, it made my day. We struck up a conversation. We talked about the live show. Shout out to you guys over there who are watching. I am so glad you tune in. Mike, Nathan, Glenda, y'all just made my weekend. You really did. 
You help me so much, so thank you. If you have an RV, diesel, some kind of big equipment thing, you will not go wrong by taking it to them. I would say not an ad, but it's an ad because I just wanna send business to them. So, so thankful to you guys. Mm. Wow, it is the orange cinnamon that we had yesterday. That's good stuff right there. Okay, what are you thankful for? Come on, I gotta see some things. We're headed into the weekend. I'm also so thankful that this is week six of the show. And I just cannot wait to tell you what I got this morning for this. Okay, let's just, let's just dive into it. Let's dive into it. So I'm running with my brother. You guys know about two weeks ago, God told me two miles every day for 30 days. That was all I got. Those were the only instructions I got. Two miles every day for 30 days. And I said, why would I do that? I don't run unless a bear is behind me or unless I'm seriously being chased. Running's not my thing, but he is talking to me about getting out of my comfort zone. And that means doing things sometimes that I don't like, but yet have benefits. I'm gonna throw in a sub point right here because my brother and I, after my run this morning, after our run, we got into this discussion. Guys, I cannot be more serious about this. Right now, during this COVID season, you've got to be exercising and eating healthy. The best way to stay healthy right now, the best way to fight this pandemic, the best way, of course, absolute prayer, that's number one. But then you've got to do your part. I don't understand all of COVID. I know there's conspiracies out there. I know there's politics involved. I know there's spiritual warfare. I, I understand all those things are there, but let's do our part exercise daily and eat healthy. You heard it right here on the Jungle Gym Live Show. If you want to get through this, put God first in your life and then for your absolute self so you can be your very best version for you and for others, so you can stay absolute healthiest, let's fight this thing physically as well as spiritually. Exercise and eat healthy. I don't wanna get into all the details my brother and I talked about this morning, but please take it serious. Okay, so we're doing this two mile run thing every day, every day. You know, you know the problem with running every day? It's so every day, like it is so every day. But we're, we're getting into it. We, were, we had a rhythm. We were, we were going after it. We started out a little strong. Uh, I, we started out a seven minute mile and let's be honest, that is not where we're at. But we were, we were going after it. We had gone about a mile, a little over a mile, 1.2 miles. And then we are on the turnaround to come back and there's a hill. Now I listen to music and I pray when I run. And I hear Holy Spirit say to me, run faster. And my reply was, don't you see the hill? Don't you see the hill? Run faster. Up the hill? Yes. Run faster. Boom. I don't ask questions anymore. I just go for it. Like, I, I, I expect that God's just going to explain it to me later. And if he doesn't, that's okay. Boom. I take off. I take off up that hill. I get to the top of the hill and I'm like, ah, ah. now my brother, on the other hand, did not get the same word that I got. So he's still like trucking his normal pace. And by the way, my brother is a much better runner than I am. He is so much better than I am. But he, he just didn't feel that same urge to run uphill like I just did. So I slowed down just a little bit. His pace then caught up with me where I was, and so we just kind of kept running together again. And then there's another hill. And guess what? Of course, what does Holy Spirit say? Run faster. Okay, boom, I take off running again. And I'm thinking, my brother probably thinks I am nuts. It's all right, I'm doing what I'm told to do. I run, 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 run up that hill, and then, and then God speaks to me again. Because I slow it down just a little bit, 
well, quite a bit from the hill run, but of normal pace. I slow it down just a bit. My brother catches up, probably thinking I'm absolutely nuts. And then Holy Spirit says, I want you to do this in life. This is so good. When you get to those moments in life that look uphill, I want you to worship harder than you've ever worshiped before. It hit me. I got it. I got the spiritual implication. When things get hard, when we had those uphills in our 5K, our marathon, our sprint lives that we've got going on. Maybe you're cross country. Maybe you're like, this is a cross country run for me. Life is like a cross country run. When you get to those hills in life, you've got to run harder in worship. You've got to run harder in prayer. You've got to run harder into scripture. You've got to go at it. Oh, I'm seeing the hearts. I'm, th I'm seeing the thumbs up. I'm seeing it. Come on. I'm glad. Those are like you saying, amen. Amen, sister. Yes. Now here, God didn't stop. This is what was so cool. Next, he said, but when you're on the flat area, when you're on the flat Slow down so that others can catch up with you. Yes! Slow down so others can catch up with you. This is so good. He who has ears, let him hear. All right, so you've gone through that hill in life, but you've busted through it in worship. You've gotten through it with hard, heavy prayer. Now you're on the plateau. You're on the flat. Slow down so others can catch up and begin to pace with you. And then I thought, so then on the downhill, we go even harder. And he said, no, 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 no. Keep your same pace. I thought, now that doesn't seem quite right. But scripture says his ways, his ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Okay, come on, explain it to me. Why would I not, when it's so easy, why would I not jet downhill? Why, why wouldn't you do that? Like, that's when you can succeed. Mm-mm. Mm -mm. The implication that he gave me was a downhill is a lot like, anybody ever been to like a spiritual or church conference? Have you ever been to a conference or maybe um, a class? Maybe you took a class like to fire you up in your area of giftedness and you were so excited. Or maybe you just went to church and mm, pastor was on point and it was so good. You leave all fired up. You go to that conference all fired and excited. You go to that class and you are getting the good stuff. Yes. But then, now you don't have to give me a heart or a thumbs up or anything for this one, but just in your heart, check yourself. Have you ever left that conference, that service that was so good or that class? And then it was almost like, it wasn't that your fire died out. But it went back, not just to the pace that it was at before the conference, but it went even farther back. Because you exerted so much during that conference. You went after it so hard during that conference. You almost got a little cocky, confident, yet too much. Now, I'm not saying don't go to conferences. I'm not saying don't go to good sermons and classes. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is what Holy Spirit said to me. As you're going through the downhills, those easy times, as you're going through those things that just mm, fuel you up, keep a consistent pace so that when you come out of it, you're more full, which is good, but you can keep that consistent pace. I don't know if you're getting this. Are you getting this? Am I explaining it? Am I explaining this okay? Because let me just, let me put it in perspective for myself. All right. I'm, I'm chugging along. I'm doing fine. And then I get to go to a conference. I drink from a fire hose at that conference. 
And then I got to plateau back into normal life again, right? So I go back into normal life, but it was almost like I burned out some because I exerted so much during the conference. And then I actually took three steps back. I learned a lot, but I took three steps back from maybe my consistent walk or my devotional time or my quiet time with the Lord. I don't know. If, is it, maybe it's just me, but I've been there. I've done it. So this spiritual implication worked. But here's the other thing. Let's go back to that uphill climb. I also know that in life, as well as when I'm out running those two miles, that when I've gotten to the bottom of the hill and then I see that uphill, I see it coming, I mentally say to myself, I've got to slow down in order to get up. Mm -mm. No. Holy Spirit says, go harder. Go faster. Don't give in to flesh. Give in to the Spirit. Go harder. Go faster. Worship more. Ha! Ah, because that's what's going to get you through it. And then on top of the hill. Then when you get on top of the hill and it goes back to level again, then you've got something really special inside. Have you ever felt that? Have you ever gotten that? Are you... You tracking with me here? I think this is an amazing lesson for all of us. When our brain says, back it off. This is hard. It's too much. Slow it down. This is a hard season. Bunker down. Hide under the covers. No. Throw those covers off. Throw your arms up in the air and go for it. Go after God with all the gusto you've got. Watch him bless that uphill circumstance. Unlike you could have ever asked for or imagined. I am so thankful for this lesson. Now my brother, <laughs> I have to tell you, Paul Harvey, the rest of the story. So we finished the run and he goes, what was that? <laughs> What was that? He's like, you, you sped up to go up the hill. And I said, I was getting my message for the live today. And he said, well, I started to go after you, but then my calves cramped up. <laughs> it's going to feel like a cramp. It's going to. And your brain's going to tell you, no, don't do it. But I'm telling you, go after it. Go hard after it. But then on the plateaus, slow it down so that others can catch up with you. So then you can run, you can encourage, you can love, you can disciple, you can minister. Let me tell you, I am so thankful that my brother is doing this run with me. I did the first run the first week. I did all the first week myself, by myself. And then man, am I glad he joined in with me. There is something about having not only that accountability, have you you been there before where you you just do it better when somebody else is doing it with you? And it's been really cool. A few days, uh, it wasn't today, but a few days in this one area we run, well, what I do is I will actually lead. Not because I'm a better runner. He is a far better runner than I. But because I know that it's like him pushing me. Like I don't want to slow down because I want his pace to stay up where he's usually at, which is really good. And so I feel kind of that pressure pushing me from behind. But then on the way coming back, what I'll often do is I'll have him come in front of me so that I have to keep up with him. This is also a really good spiritual implication. Find somebody that you can do the hard stuff with. Find a friend, find a coworker, find somebody at church, find a friend online, find somebody, a family member even. I mean, this is my brother, but we're, we're such good friends. I'm so thankful for that. Find somebody you can do the hard stuff with. It makes it so much better. We have so much fun. And yeah, it's hard. I, I'm not saying that now after two weeks, I am loving running. I'm not there. But I love my time with him. And we make the running fun. 
So there are your spiritual implications for the week. Run uphill, slow down on the plateaus to let other people catch up with you. And then as you're going downhill, pace yourself. Pace yourself so that when you get to the bottom and start plateauing again, others can come along and feed off of you and run with you. I love you guys. Have an awesome weekend. Mine is very full. Pray for me, but the word of the weekend that Daddy God gave me today is the word simplicity. Keep it simple. Just keep it simple. I love you. I'll see you on Monday. Special guest coming up next week. See you then. Bye.